quiet morning at the U.S. Air Force Base in Incirlik, southern Turkey, America's closest military position to Syria. These test flights could soon become real. They're poised for an order that's yet to come. I have not made a decision, but I think it's important that uh, if, in fact, uh, we make a choice to uh, have repercussions for the use of chemical weapons, then the Assad regime, which is involved in a civil war, trying to protect itself, uh, will have received uh, a pretty strong signal that, in fact, it better not do it again. Even some of the most hawkish in the U.S. aren't convinced by the idea of striking Syria. There really hasn't been any indication from the administration as to what our national interest is with respect to this particular situation. As Britain stumbles, France has reiterated its readiness to act. Everything must be done for a political solution. But it will only happen if the coalition is able to appear as an alternative with the necessary force, notably with its army. All the talk of an imminent strike has sparked concerns in Israel over possible Syrian retaliation. Edgy residents of Tel Aviv jostle for gas masks with no clear outline of military plans. All they have is rumour. Things are also heating up in the Mediterranean. Russia is sending its warships in. President Putin insists this is to protect national security and not to threaten any nation. Russia's absolute refusal to back military intervention in Syria remains. Today, Britain sent six typhoon jets to its base at Akrotiri in Cyprus. America sent a warship to the eastern Mediterranean to replace one of the four that are already there. Russia sent two ships to the same waters, a missile cruiser and an anti-submarine ship. And a French anti-air warfare frigate set sail for the same region. The indiscriminate slaughter of civilians, the killing of women and children and innocent bystanders by chemical weapons is a moral obscenity. The U.S. Secretary of State's address at the beginning of the week was branded a war speech, paving the way for imminent action. In the immediate aftermath of the chemical weapon attack, there was kind of a gut response that something needed to be done. And the images coming out of Syria were so horrific that it really sparked this desire to do urgent action. I think that now that some of that has died down and the images are kind of fading from our minds, there is a sense that we actually need to think about what this action is going to do, what the consequences are. And that now there's much more kind of cautious weighing of the different possibilities for action. President Obama promised to send Assad's government a pretty strong signal not to use chemical weapons again. His own conflict is between his cautious foreign policy instinct and that self-imposed red line that makes not acting near impossible. Amanda Walker, Sky News, Washington.